Hello all the person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing meteorites, although from the title of this video you probably know exactly what story we're going to be discussing. Because this was such an unusual story, and it was discussed in a lot of different media already. We're talking about this, a rock detected by Susie Kopp, a resident of New Jersey, that found this on her floor when she returned home. And a rock that, without any doubt, is most likely a meteorite that crashed into her house on May 8th around 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In the process of obviously damaging the roof, bouncing off the floor, hitting the ceiling, and ending on the floor at the end. And because this rock was still warm when she picked it up, there's very little doubt that this came from outer space. And so by itself, this is already a pretty interesting story, mostly because these are extremely rare. As a matter of fact, we only have a handful of stories where a meteorite hit someone else's home, or maybe even damage something in the process. And so in this video, we'll briefly discuss some of these previous events, but more importantly, we're actually going to discuss the origin of this and why this is an extremely exciting discovery for a lot of different scientists studying the solar system and obviously studying meteorites and asteroids. And so let's talk a little bit more about this and why this is sort of exciting. But first, a really brief history of previous events that even became really famous over time. You can actually learn about some of these events in the videos in the description. And the most famous similar event that actually even injured someone today is known as Silacoga meteorite. The event that happened back in 1954 and ended up producing this huge bruise when it hit Anne Hodges while she was sleeping. And the only reason she was able to survive and the reason it didn't actually kill her was because it bounced off something else first, hitting and destroying the radio first. But even before that, it produced a meter-wide gap in her roof. And so she definitely got super lucky. But even before that, there were several documents from Turkey from the 19th century that even suggested that several people were killed by a meteorite, with one being paralyzed as a result. There are also reports of people being killed from the Tunguska event in 1908, and even an early event from 1677, where documents from Milan claimed someone was killed by a rock as well. Although in this case, this would be very difficult to verify. But even more recently, in 2021, we have another rock in British Columbia in Canada landing on someone's pillow, with several other similar events reported in the last few decades. Another rock in 2015 potentially crashed into someone's house in Uruguay, destroying a bed and a TV in the process. So these events, even though they are unusual, do happen here and there. And mostly because there are basically just so many people out there and so many ways that this could happen due to the sheer number of various tiny rocks entering our planet every single day. But because these events are so unusual, normally they get a lot of airtime and thus appear to be more likely to happen, even though they're actually ridiculously rare. You're actually more likely to be hit by lightning several times in a row than be hit by a meteorite even once. Nevertheless, in our psyche, these events do seem to be a little bit more frequent because of the psychological phenomenon known as availability heuristic. Or in other words, because the media reports on these events very frequently, and because these are such dramatic events, they appear to be kind of common, even though they're extremely rare. And because these events are so extremely rare, it's always fun to discuss them. But this rock is interesting for a different reason. It's interesting because of its nature and where it possibly came from. Because of the date when it occurred, May 8th, the scientists now believe this was probably a result of a very common meteor shower. This beautiful simulation by Ian Webster sort of shows us some of the more common meteor showers with various particles orbiting the solar system. Now, every one of them is a result of some kind of a cometary object. Or basically, these are particles left over by those comets as they orbit around the solar system and shed a lot of dust. And in early May, we have Eta Aquarids the meteor shower that actually resembles another one. So if you look at the orbit of these particles, you'll notice that they also match with Orionids, even though Orionids usually have more particles and thus produce more collisions. Implying, of course, that this is very likely from the same object, and very likely because this object crossed the orbit of planet Earth two separate times. And as you can see in this case, the object that's orbiting here has a very high eccentricity. It's approximately 96% or 0.96 with the closest approach to the Sun being somewhere between Mercury and Venus at roughly around 88 million kilometers. And this object is Halley's Comet. Yeah, that Halley's Comet. The most famous comet ever. And a comet that was even depicted in ancient texts because it was partially responsible for the Norman victory at the Battle of Hastings, which resulted in the Norman conquest of England. And basically because prior to this battle, that particular comet was seen as a gnomon and a lot of soldiers became discouraged. At least that's how the legend goes. We don't really know exactly what happened, 
but it's been shown in various tapestries and was obviously seen as a sign of divine intervention. But more intriguingly, it's the only comet that's usually visible to a naked eye that, in theory, a person can see twice in their lifetime. Assuming, of course, you can live long enough. And that's because this comet comes back every 75 years. But a comet that probably looks something like this. Just a rock that's approximately 15 kilometers in size. But if we change the time to 1986 and move far enough from this object, we're going to start seeing it in a very different way. It's going to resemble a typical, very, very bright comet. And the next time it's going to appear in the skies again is going to be 2061. So unfortunately, not a lot of us are going to be seeing it, but if you're young enough, you're probably going to be lucky. But I guess more intriguingly, this comet has been seen by ancient humans going as far back as 240 BC. And the scientists that they believe that it was very likely in the same orbit for at least 16,000 years, possibly even as much as 200,000 years. We don't really know where it came from originally, and we're not going to know what's going to happen to it eventually, but it's probably still going to be doing this for a few thousand years. Although its origins are somewhat unusual, especially because of its orbit. It has what's known as a retrograde orbit. It orbits in the opposite direction from everything else, and even passes Earth at a relative velocity of 71 kilometers per second, basically ridiculously fast. As you can imagine, when this rock was entering the atmosphere, it was probably moving at a very similar velocity, so this was a very powerful event. But since its origin is a little bit of a mystery, and because this is such a famous comet that even influenced human history, at the moment a lot of scientists would really love to study the details of its formation and of course its origins. And to do so, they need those meteorites. And so to a lot of scientists, this right here is pure gold. And so there's a big chance that in the next few years, we might actually get incredible studies analyzing exactly what's inside this rock and potentially discovering something really incredible. Assuming, of course, that this is indeed a piece of the Halley's Comet. Although based on statistics alone, it's very, very likely. This was right in the middle of a meteor shower, so statistically it's just very unlikely to be anything else. And because back in 1986, Halley's Comet became the first ever to be observed both from space by different spacecrafts and from Earth by different telescopes, at the moment this is one of the most well-studied comets ever, but the comet that we still know very little about. And so chances are that maybe in the next few years, we'll have at least a few studies discovering the actual contents of this object, possibly finding out its unusual origins, explaining why it has such an unusual orbit, basically going against the flow, or maybe even discovering what exactly made it assume this orbit in the solar system. It's probably Jupiter, but it's not entirely clear. Until then though, or until future meteorites crashing into people's homes, that's pretty much it. Check out all of the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.